Welcome back to another episode and today we will lock our doors. So right now this door and this door they both are locked. I don't have a key for this one but I have a key for this one. So now if I hold shift and interact with it once then release shift and interact with it once more the doors are getting opened and unlocked and now everybody can interact with them because well they are unlocked. Now if I hold shift and interact with them once more now they are locked and now nobody can interact with those. So let's begin. So in order for us to lock the doors, we're going to need a couple of more things. So first, let's go to our interface. So we have our door interface in here. Let's add a new function and let's call this lock, lock door. And then let's give this an input. First input, let's call this component, which is going to be again the primitive, primitive component. And then we need another input, which is going to be the player reference. So let's make this, let's call this player and I'm just going to use a regular actor because I'm going to cast to it later. So this should be good for the locking. Let's close this. Now let's go real quick. Let's go to our door actor uh, because we want to provide a couple of things from the outside. So for example, we want to provide the is locked. So let's promote that to a variable. Let's call this is locked. Here we go. So we have that value. Then we want to have a key. So let's promote that one. Uh, the key itself is going to give us an error if we call it a key. Uh, I guess not. Okay. So key is working. Then let's promote the code. So we need the code. There we go. And so now if we would select these variables and make sure that all of them are instance editable and exposed on spawn, we will be able to provide this from the outside. So once we have done that, we can compile and save this. And now we are going to be able to provide this from the outside. So let's go now to our, let's fix up our first per first person character first. So we have our interaction. And what I actually want to do over here is I want to have some a different key to lock and unlock the doors. So I'm going to do the left shift so left shift event and so over here let's now add a new variable let's call this is left shift down and so on shift pressed i'm going to set this to be true and on released i'm going to set this back to false so now when we uh, hold shift and interact with the doors they will get locked or unlocked if we have the key so then in our line trace on our e key from the true we want to do another if branch because we want to check whether is the shift key down. So then what we can do is reconnect or open something to the false route. So now if the key is not down, we can open the doors. But if it's true, then instead we want to use our lock door message like so. And again, the same target, the same component. But for the player, we want to have a reference to self. So to this specific actor. So now we are good with the character as well. Let's go to our door master now. So once we get there, the first thing, let's create our event lock door. Here we go. We have our lock door event from this one. Then we can find the door. And again, let's provide the component just like we do for the open something. Then we can do a if branch from the found to know whether we found the door or not. And then we need a new function, which I'm going to call, let's call this lock door s. So multiple because we are already using the lock door. So then from that one, we can run this from the true. And now let's set up everything we need inside of this function. So first, what I want to do is add some inputs to this one. So the first one is going to be the index. So the index of the doors and that needs to be an integer. And then we also want to provide the player. And for that one, I'm just going to use a regular actor reference. And then once we have done that, we can then promote our index to a local variable so that we don't have too many uh, long routes. So let's call this local door. Uh, local door seems to be a good name then from the player we can then cast to in my case the first person character there we go and one thing that i forgot to add in the character so we have the keys and in my case i'm just using an integer for the keys if you are following my inventory system series then you probably want to open up the s door structure and change the key from an integer to an s slot type uh, and then you would have to look through your character for that key i haven't implemented the inventory system in this one so i'm just going to use the integers so i'm going to call a new variable called 
keys that's going to be in my character and I'm going to make sure this is an integer and an array of integers because I'm going to have many many keys so I'm going to add one entry and I'm going to type 55 and that's going to be my key and my keys number is going to be 55 so now back in our door master we can then get all of our keys so we get the array of keys then we can do a loop for each with a break and that means we are going to go through all of our keys and then we want to bring in our doors array because well we want to get a copy to our door so local door index and then we can break this one because we want to check whether the key that's needed for this door exactly is exactly the same as the array element in the keys that we have so then if that is true then well let's do a if branch check for this one and then if that is true then we want to have a local variable uh, which is going to be local found and then on true we can set this to be a true value and then we can go to the break to be done with this loop so then again some small rerouting like this and then once we have done that we can do an if branch check because we want to check whether the local is found so whether we found the doors uh, that might actually be used for this one then we want to do another if branch check and over here uh, I'm going to use this one to check whether these are actually doors because I might have drawers later as well and I don't want my drawers to be locked so this is why I'm having this exact branch you might just skip it if you want to have a lockable drawers as well so here then I'm going to get the doors and then again I'm going to get a copy to the door local index then let's split this guy so we get all the values out of it and so for this condition we want to check whether is door and then if that is true then we want to do another if branch check because we want to check whether the doors are locked so is locked then let's add another local variable and let's call this local let's call this local bool and basically this is going to uh, swap the value technically so if the door is locked if it's true then we want to set the local boolean to be false if it's false then we want to set this to be true and then we're going to feed that into our s doors structure and to do so again let's get our doors array let's then set the array element let's connect both of the executions from here then we want to provide the index the index is going to be our local door index and i'm going to do it like this then let's make the item so make the door structure and then we want to connect all basically all of this so component rotation location is door uh, for the is locked we want to use the local bool instead and the rest can get connected the same way so the key and the code and it at the end should look something like this so then let's compile and save this let's go back to our event graph and now let's provide these values that are needed so index comes from the find door and the player comes from the uh, event lock door there we go so this should look something like this you can add a sound effect after this if you want and now the last thing is to check uh, before we open the doors whether they are open or locked so let's actually move this whole bunch back and first from the is locked let's do an if let's connect the execution and only if this is false then we can proceed with opening the doors otherwise well we can't open the doors because well they are obviously locked if that is true now let's give this a go so i'm gonna select a couple of doors so let's select these ones so now since we exposed variables and uh, and made them instance editable we are allowed to change these so then we can set the first door let's set this to be locked uh, no key then for the second one again locked but let's set this to be the key 55 so that's exactly the key that i added in my character so now let's give it a go so if we walk up walk up to these doors they're opening just fine but these two are not so now if we hold shift and interact with it nothing happens because we don't have a key for this but if we hold shift and then release shift and click again the doors are getting opened we can also close these and now the doors are unlocked so we can interact with them and basically everybody can interact with them if we hold shift click them once more nobody can interact with those because now they are locked and yeah that's going to be it for today's video hope you learned something new hope this was useful make sure to subscribe and see you in the next video